Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our Sit Up Spiritual Impact Training Using Prayer and Scripture. I'm Pastor Tony Brooke Brown, and I'm coming with our word today. So today we are getting our spiritual exercise word, so you could take the verse of Scripture back, meditate on it, get more Scriptures, do your spiritual exercises, getting spiritually fit. We take this word, we study it, we apply it. And we share it because we are called to be witnesses, to be soldiers. We can't fight without our without our weapon, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. Those are our sit-ups because the Bible lets us know uh, bodily exercise profits little. But godliness, it profits in this life and the one to, to come. And so we are exercising godliness. And so remember that if you want to join us for the prayer portion, we are on Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and the phone line Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Information underneath the YouTube video. And for help to get motivated in your spiritual regimen daily working out this word, there is a link underneath this YouTube video for the sit-ups ebook. Please remember this is an ebook. You have to download it on an electronic device. These are not mailed out. They are not physical books. They are ebooks. They are electronic. So you put them on your phone, your tablet, your laptop, or whatever, and download it on your e-reader, and you can read it and open it up as you go. And if you are have a, a, one of those e-readers that reads it for you, uh, you can put it on, on some of those and... As you go, you can be listening to the ebook. And so, uh, so here we go. Our word for today, we are going to Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Remember, you want to go back, you're going to be studying and meditating on this word because you have to be like the people of Berea. The Bible says they came with ready minds, but then they went back. And then they looked and they studied to make sure what they heard was the truth. Amen. So, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified as the videos are uploaded daily for your spiritual word. Are you in Philippians 4 and 19? Did you write it down? This is a very familiar verse of scripture. Uh, and it reads in the King James simply, um, but my God, shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So I want to look at this verse of scripture. It's not a prosperity message. This we are talking about leveling up. We're talking about leveling up. God meets our needs. He supplies. And so this is uh, this word supply here. You know, when you look at the word supply, um, there's a lot of definitions for supply um, to, you know, to furnish, to to uh, to give, to to uh, provide a need. Um, there are several definitions. But um, as we look at provision and as we look at support and as we look at um, just this word supply, when we think of it, we're thinking of getting everything that we want. People start thinking about everything that I want. God supplies all my needs. So I want this and I want that. And I want to obtain this. And I want to, I want to buy this. I want to purchase that. And, um, the false teaching is just lay your hands on it and believe it and you receive it. Right. And so the lavish resources, um, you know, grand things and, you know, have the best because my God will supply all of you, all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Well, the definition, first of all, for the words uh, supply for this particular verse of scripture, because actually when you look in, um, uh, look up the word in the Greek for the New Testament, there's several different words that are used for supply. And this particular one um, you know, so it, so this is the way it works. Like if you're looking in a strong concordance, if you're looking up uh, a word, say this word supply, well, you have a word, uh, for supply that is, um, I can't pronounce it right, but it's like epicorigal. 
And so this word you see for supply, you see the definitions for it. But this is for uh, the word minister in uh in 2 Corinthians 9 and 10, it's the same word that is used for minister in Galatians 3 and 5. It's the same uh, word that is used in uh, the verse in Colossians 2, 19 that says, having nourishment minister. It's the same word that's used in 2 Peter 1 and 5 that uh, talks about adding to. Um, and in 2 Peter 1 and 11, this Greek word, um, was used in, in the verse, uh, 2 Peter 1 and 11, where it says, shall be minister. So I'm giving you an example. Now, this word, epixagorio, epixorigio, okay? This word is the original Greek word that was used in these verses of scripture. Has a different meaning. There's also a Greek word for supply that was used in Ephesians 4.16 and Philippians 1 and 19. This word means, um, you know, provision, equipment, support. Um, so uh, it means lavish resources, making an event a grand production. But then there is a word that is used for Philippians 4 and 19 and some other verses of scripture and this word is P-L-E-R-O-O. -O, and it's pronounced plural, plural. So this word is a verb. It's an action word. So this word means to make full. It means to cause to abound. It means to um, furnish liberally. It means to render full. It means to complete. It means uh, to carry into effect, to bring to realization. Um, it means to perform, to execute. It means um, the, the sayings of promises, prophecies, to bring them to pass. Now listen, so this word is meaning to bring to pass promises and prophecies. It means to carry out, to accomplish, to bring to completion. So this word is... It's not just, you know, um, the way we want to interpret it that people can just confess this and think that you're going to be rich with all types of material things. This word means to make replete. It means literally to cram, to level up a hollow, uh, to furnish diffuse influence, to satisfy, execute an office, Finish a task, complete, accomplish, expire, fully preach. Now listen, so this is talking about purpose. This is talking about causing completion in our life. Promises and prophecies coming to pass. Leveling up is where there is a hollow place. There is something open and it and it, it, it fulfills the need to, to fill it up. And so when we're thinking about this verse of scripture, when we're thinking about what this means as it relates to us, this doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be rich and have every material thing that you need, but it does mean for the purposes that God has for us, the things that he has called us to, the ministry that he has called us to, the things that we are purposed to be, the areas where we need to be filled up, God supplies those needs. So that whatever needs to be completed in us, through us, for us, it is done. Um, when you look at these verses of scripture, when you start to look up a little bit further, when you look in verse 15, it says, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, 
an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So when we look at this verse of scripture, now, first of all, we know Paul, you know, he talks about there was times he didn't have a place to stay. He didn't have, you know, uh, enough to eat. He was cold. He was, you know, he didn't have everything that he, that the, that the world would want. Um, what we think of is, oh, you know, you, you don't have a place to stay. You don't have this. You don't have that. Then you must not have faith. No, Paul had faith. Paul preached the gospel. Paul was willing to give up everything just for the gospel's sake. But he, his needs, his basic needs were being met. Because when you look at this word further in the Greek, what it talks about is necessities. It says this is what it means to, to um, the condition of one deprived of those things which he is scarcely able to do without. So this is talking about things that we need to live. These are necessities of life. This is what we need in order for us to be able to make it through the day. This is not... And you know, 600 channels of cable. This is not a brand new Mercedes. This is not, um, you know, the biggest mansion. This is not designer clothing. These are necessities that we need in order to fulfill the purposes that God has given us in order for us to be healthy, in order for us, and it's need. What do you need for your daily life? So it's not even just material things and money, but it is peace. It is joy. When you think of this word need, now Paul is talking about those that sold in and gave a gift, you know, of what, you know, so his needs were being met. But when you look at this verse and you think about God supplying our need, before we begun, begin to confess this and make it into a prosperity message where we're disappointed if we don't get the biggest and the best, Let's look at it the way the prayer, even the model prayer that Jesus gave us. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us what we need today. You know, in the Old Testament, everything is, is natural stories that happen. But it has a spiritual meaning for us. Even as the children of Israel were going to the promised land, ours is spiritual, eternal life. We are in this journey, right? And as the tabernacle, as you look at every part of the tabernacle, every piece of furniture, every, even the door that you go in, even the, the you know, you think about the, the table of showbread, the light stand, all of it is a picture of Jesus Christ. So everything that's natural there, when they went to war and they battled, we have a spiritual battle. So I say all of that to say that when we talk about our, you know, our, our needs being met, remember how God daily provided manna for the children of Israel in the wilderness. He didn't give them bags of groceries for the week. He didn't give them, you know, money to go spend at the grocery store or a bridge card or a snap or whatever to just go and get an abundance and fill up the cupboards and the refrigerator and everything for the month. He didn't do that. Every day they had to trust him for their literal daily bread, their food for the day to sustain them through the day. We are believing God to give us what we need so that we are sustained. The faith, the patience, the peace, the resources, the, the divine connections, everything that we need in order for us to be productive, to be fruitful, to be healthy, to be a vessel, to be an instrument of righteousness unto God. When we begin to look at it like that, right? Because Paul is the one saying, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Well, this is the same man that is preaching the gospel saying, listen, you know, I've been in prison for this. I have been beaten for this. I've gone without food for this. I've gone without a place to stay for this. I've gone cold because I didn't have enough to wear for this. So this is not somebody giving a prosperity message. This is somebody saying, God will supply your need. Whatever you need to maintain God will supply it. So I'm saying all this so that we have the right mindset in growth, that we're not focused on material things from God because that comes. Whatever it is he wants us to have, it comes. There are some believers that may be rich, some that may be 
you know, just getting their daily bread. There's some right in between. That is not our focus because Jesus says we're not defined by the things that we obtain, the things that we have. In fact, the Bible lets us know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. All oh, what things? What Jesus was talking about in Matthew chapter six, when he says, take no thought for what you're going to eat, drink or wear. God already knows you have need of these things. So seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. So when you think about your day-to-day -day needs, you don't need to worry about that. What you need to sustain, what you need to overcome, what you need to be more than a conqueror, what you need to have favor, don't worry about that. Connect with God. He supplies your needs. So when you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, your needs are being met. And so I want us to, to really dig into this because what do you need? And oftentimes if we can sit back and see the difference between what we really need and what we're asking for and seeking and chasing after in the world, this is the difference between being able to be content and then always striving for more, being stressed out because we don't have this and we don't have that and we want this and we got to pay for this and the kids want that. Focus on what the needs are. Sometimes the things that we even give to kids, they don't need it. And because we give it, then they begin to think the world owes it to them. And they begin to seek after stuff instead of seeking after God as they're growing older. So we need to be able to separate. Because the funny thing is this, this same chapter where he's saying, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This is the same chapter where you're reading in verses 11 through 13 when he's talking about, listen, I both abound and been abased. I've had and I haven't had. I've been hungry. I've been full. He said, but in every, he said, in all things, I've learned to be content in whatever state I'm in. He said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. This is our meat. What we need is a closer relationship with God, seeking his kingdom, seeking his righteousness. And then when we have that relationship right, God shows us what we need. He provides what we need, whether he's sending it through, you know, you know, Paul's talking about, hey, you helped me. You know, nobody else was helped, but you did. But the thing is, is that God can use whomever, whatever he desires but he takes care of his, that our needs are met. Because in all of Paul talking about there was times he didn't have enough of this or enough of that, he was never yet complaining. He didn't quit. He didn't give up. It wasn't like, this is too much. I'm going to have to quit because I need a place to stay. I need more food. I can't deal with this. No, because when you are satisfied and content in who you are in Christ, in right relationship with God, seeking his kingdom and his righteousness, desiring more of him, your needs are already met. We're going to close out in prayer. What you want to do or what I am asking you to do is to go back today and really just dig into this scripture and do a self-examination. I want you to look at where you're at. Are you content? What is it that you're still striving for, looking for, desiring to obtain, to have, to be? Are those needs and is it is it keeping you from being content? Is it causing you to wake up thinking about what you got to do to get more of this and that? Are there some things that you need to minimize in your life, get rid of, you know, something that may be an extra bill that you don't need, something in your life that's costing you time and effort that you could be using to do what God called you to do and be content and receive the peace of God. This is a self-examination, taking this verse of scripture, digging into it, and then saying, hey, where am I at on this? Because it is no, there's no exercise in godliness or getting this word in us without application. And the word says, examine yourself. And so that's what we want to do is we want to examine ourselves and make sure that we're in the faith. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for all that are watching, listening to this right now. Help us, Lord, to examine ourselves. Help us not to be, uh, you know, affected by the lust of the eyes, the lust of the 
the flesh and the pride of life. Help us not to chase after material things and filthy lucre, but help us to chase after you, pursue you. Lord God, show us anything in our life that doesn't need to be there. Anything that is a distraction, anything that is hindering us, consuming us, overtaking us, things that we're striving for that you never called us to. Help us to desire what you desire, to delight ourselves in you, commit our ways to you, listen for your voice, be obedient and good stewards. And so God, we ask that you would show us, reveal Lord God to us any wickedness in our heart and help us to let go of greed, pride, and haughtiness. Help us to be content. Help us, Lord God, to be satisfied in the fact that we can call you Abba Father, that we have been chosen to be your children. And God, we just honor you today. We bless your name and we thank you for supplying all of our need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you to life. Pray to see you in the mornings, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for prayer. And then here for your word for the day. God bless you.